We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. A great big welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. The weather is perfect here today. It's warm and sunny. In the middle of March, you can't really ask for better than that. We've had so many new viewers that have come onto the channel in the last couple of weeks. It's just phenomenal. Uh, I, I think we must have put something out there that went viral. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> what happened, but welcome all of you new people. We really appreciate having you here. And I'd like to talk about something. We had a letter that came in our mail and it was from a viewer in the far north of France, as it said on there, and her name is Yvonne. Normally we like to write back to people who write to us, but she didn't include a return address. So Yvonne from the north of France, if you're watching this, hello and thank you for your letter. Thank you so much. It was such a wonderful letter. Very uplifting and encouraging. Yes. We loved it. Thank you. Yes. And if you do want to write to us, here's our post office box right here. In the past weeks, we've asked you guys about what you'd like us to do, and you gave some incredible suggestions of topics that we can do for this channel. And so today we're going to take one of those topics, which is Victorian lighting. It just so happens we have a little bit left here. If you're lucky to have bought an old house and you still have your light fixtures, the original ones, count yourself lucky because in the 30s, 40s, 50s, people started pulling light fixtures down and replacing them because they weren't the old treasures that they are today. They were just old light fixtures. <laughs> but we do have a few left and we'll show you some of those. We're also gonna talk about the Victorian electrical system in detail. We're gonna show you some pictures that will enlighten you. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say scare you. Maybe I don't want to say that, but <laughs> yes, we're going to show you some good pictures yes. and we have a lot of good stuff in the works right now. In a past episode, we mentioned that this house right behind us here is actually being restored. Now that house had gotten into some pretty bad shape, a lot of rot, a lot of decay and kind of sat vacant and derelict and people had tried to fix it and it just wasn't getting done but it has new owners now and they're friends of ours and they're actually going over there and they're doing a lot of good work over there uh, a lot of rotten woods coming out some great stuff is happening and we're going to try to take you over there in the next few weeks and give you a tour and show you some more historic preservation that's going on in our neighborhood i have a question for y'all what does this mystery structure and a Victorian wedding have in common? Well, we found out and we've got some great pictures, we've got some great historical data, and we now know the story of this house and what this thing is for. We're gonna share that with you in an upcoming video. We're working on it now, it's gonna be great. So stay tuned in the next couple of weeks to see that. You guys, I am so excited by the things we saw today and the people we talked to. The history here is just unbelievable and it was right here under our noses and we didn't even see it until today. So, okay, I gotta get off that topic. So today's topic, which I don't think I announced earlier, is about Victorian lighting. Yes, I guess I did, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Anyway, Victorian lighting, um, but the story has to start right here at the electrical box. Now, last year, we put this brand new breaker panel in here to replace what we call the Victorian electrical system. And it, there is a story all into itself here that I can't wait to tell about the electrical system, particularly at this address, okay? So here's the new breaker panel. We put this in, got it hooked up, and we have a few circuits working on it. So now we're climbing into our electrical time machine and we're going back to the 1960s. At one point, not too far back, was a meter box. And the breaker panel here is actually still working. So this panel right here takes a feed off the modern breaker panel and that keeps the rest of the old electrical system alive. But the funny part is you've got that box feeding this box, which then goes and feeds a fuse box, which feeds the old Victorian electrical system. Uh, it's kind of a weird setup and we're trying to get that fixed, but we wanted to kind of take you back through time and show you how these things used to work. 1960s breaker panel. These were probably first generation circuit breakers. And yeah, it's time for them to retire. I'm standing here in what used to be the back porch of the house, which was later closed in and today serves as our laundry room. Now, 
After we leave the 1960s breaker panel, we come into this wooden cabinet here. Fuse boxes. So this is one fuse box that says front porch outlets. See the old fuses in there, that's kind of fun. Here's the switch. Now last year we disconnected this thing and ran a circuit breaker, so this is no longer used. We just haven't taken it out yet. And over here is another one. This one actually does work. We don't know what it does, but it has two glass fuses and a lever here so that we could turn it on or off. Up here, kind of looks like a main disconnect. This thing here actually used to feed the kitchen stove and a bunch of other stuff too. Wires were double terminated. Well, we took care of that, so there's no more double termination going on. Now this is kind of funny, you guys. This cracks me up. You lift up this door and look at this. It is an asbestos lined box that has knob and tube and porcelain electrical circuits in it. Those circuits are still hot today. I could reach in there and shock myself if I wanted to. But see here, that's a knife switch. I can pull on it and kill some of the electrical in the house. I don't know what it would do and I've never tried it. But here's another one right here. And fuses. But check out the wiring. Aside from the obviously modern wire here that feeds it, you actually have knob and tube type wire up on the top there. It goes up inside the wall and goes up towards the attic and then it fans out from there. Amazing. But it's even more amazing that it still works. There's a certain amount of bragging rights in knowing that your electrical system is 123 years old and still works perfectly. Great. But you say, whoa, whoa, knob and tube wiring, that's scary, it's dangerous. Is it really? Well, here's the fact. So when they did knob and tube wiring, they would run the hot here, they would run the neutral here, and they were usually spread apart by several inches. There is no way that these two wires can cross each other and short out. Okay, so that in itself, as long as it was well done properly, is not dangerous. What's dangerous is when people come in, like say 20th century electricians, and they try to modify it or they try to add on to it. We've actually seen that in this house where somebody would take a modern piece of Romex and splice it into knob and tube wiring and power up something. Not good, guys, not good. But is it dangerous in itself? No, it's not. Do we want to replace it? Yes, we do. If knob and tube wiring is safe, then why do we want to replace it? Well, really it's a practical one, a couple of reasons. A, we can get more capacity with modern wiring, which means that we can put more load on it without overheating it. Secondly, and probably most importantly, is the fact that if you have a modern electrical system, no insurance company in the world is gonna give it a second thought. But when somebody tries to insure a historic house like this, the first thing they're gonna ask is, does it have knob and tube wiring? And if it does, they may not like that. So that's a practical consideration that you have to think about when you buy an older house. Here is a slideshow of images that I collected from the internet just to show you what some knob and tube work looks like when it's done well and what it looks like when it's done bad. Well, this job here was clearly done by a professional. See how neat and clean it is. He really enjoys this and he's clearly proud of his work. Here's another example of some good work. The main lines, the hot and the neutral, come in from the top and head downward. And then you have those two wires that take off and go left. Well, what they would do is they would cut back the insulation and then they would wrap the wire around and then solder it in place and then tape it up really good. And that was done quite commonly and it was very safe. But the main thing here is that the wires never touch each other. So you can see they're held up by by standoffs and they're held apart by so many inches and that makes for a good safe connection. Well how would you like to have this in your house? I think it's pretty cool actually. Probably not very safe and definitely not up to code. Now this is what we don't want to see. So a lot of things are going on here. You've got an extension cord probably going to a power strip and because the outlet in the floor there doesn't have a grounded outlet, 
they actually had to use one of those ground lifter plugs and plug that in. Now, if you have to plug something into an old outlet, particularly high amperage things like heaters, you need to check with your hand, feel the plug at the outlet. If that plug feels hot, turn it off, don't use it because you're overheating your wiring and that's how fires get started. Here's an example of how knob and tube wiring was adapted. On the left hand side, you see the knob and tube wiring comes into a modern junction box and then it switches over to Romex. Well, that's not good because that means that the Romex circuit is being fed by the old knob and tube. Probably not a good idea. Just go ahead and run a new circuit to your breaker panel. Here's another example of bad work here. You have the, the runners from your knob and tube. You can actually see the porcelain tube is there. But somebody cut into it and did a modern day splice onto Romex. And that Romex there is probably 1960s era, I'm guessing because of the silver jacket. And that was pretty common back in those days. Yeah, it works. Is it good? No. Just run a circuit back to the breaker panel. Whoa, how would you like to find this in your house? Especially right next to a water pipe. Look how close that bare wire is. Would you believe there was a time when this was considered normal and safe? Now I really like this one here. Um, I just love how beautiful it is. Your wires run in parallel with each other and then they come and they split and they go in different directions. It's absolutely gorgeous aesthetically. Um, I think that if I had done that, I probably would have spaced the wires a little bit further apart just for safety, but you got to admire the artistry here. Well, speaking of artistry, if you're going to have a junction box, you may as well have a custom built wooden junction box like this. Only one of our light fixtures on the front porch looks really old. Now I don't know how old it is, but it is amazing and beautiful. Let me show you, it still works. Isn't that amazing? It is beautiful. Back in the early 1900s, they had ceiling fans. Unfortunately, this is not one of them, but it's a good copy. But back then, they needed ceiling fans for two reasons, because here in the deep south, with the heat and the humidity, you needed to keep that air moving so that people could stay comfortable but also it helped kind of keep the moisture from settling on things and kind of kept things dry so you don't get mold buildup, which could happen if it gets too hot and too wet. So that's why they had these. The whole house has them, and there's only a few original fixtures left, but we're going to show them to you. We believe that this is one of our original Victorian light fixtures. It has milky glass with a brown ring frosted onto it. And it's so beautiful, but we've also outfitted this with authentic Edison style light bulbs that are carbon filament lights. These aren't the LED lights you get at your hardware store. These are actually carbon filament lights. They're hard to find, but they are out there. Let's take a look and see the warm glow. Here is another Victoria light fixture. At least we think it's original. We're not positive on any of these, of course, because we weren't here, but it has some telltale signs. The brass is very, very dark, and the wires themselves are in cloth-wrapped cords, and that's indicative of a much earlier time period because the modern stuff has plastic or rubber cords. We also put Edison bulbs in here, too, as well, just to give it that authentic look. Let's take a look. We're in the grand entryway, and here's this light fixture. It doesn't really look that grand, so it's very possible that there was a grand light fixture at one point here, and it was taken down and replaced with this. We really have no way of knowing for sure, but looking up, I can see that it has modern zip cord going up to the ceiling. But again, we don't know. This could be an old fixture. It could be something that was rewired. We just don't know. But it does have a nice vintage look to it. Here in the grand parlor is another light fixture that looks like an original. It's got these beautiful milky glass bowls here that hang down. I guess they're more like cylinders. And a golden, it's not really copper, maybe golden bronze colored fixture. It's just a beautiful thing. And 
it goes really well with the tin ceiling up there. Let's take a look and see how that is with lights on. Beautiful. Well, tastes in lighting decor have changed over time. What was popular back in the Victorian days was definitely not popular in the mid-century. Then it was all about the atomic look, the clean, the smooth, all the foofy stuff from the Victorian era was kind of frowned upon back in those days. But does it seem kind of weird to you that a Victorian house would have something like this in it? Well, we found this in one of our pantries. And I mean, these are historic in their own right. This is an authentic mid-century pull down <coughs> light fixture. It stays where you put it. Highly sought after if you can find them. And we happen to have one in a Victorian house of all things. So we pulled it out and maybe one day if we ever have a mid-century home, maybe we can install it there. But for now, it sits in a box. For those of you who live in northern climates, just know that warm spring weather is coming soon to your neighborhood. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this tour of Victorian electrical systems and Victorian lighting fixtures. Yes, and do leave a comment. Let us know what time period is your favorite lighting. We have some really great stuff coming soon. We've talked about the house down the street and the mystery structure and the story of the people who built this house. So that's all coming soon on 1834 Restoration House. Well, thank you for watching. Leave a comment, hit that like button, and we'll see you next week. Subscribe.